Hello everyone, welcome to this video about solving a challenging chord progression. And it might be the first one of a whole new series. Let's see how well this video does. But the general idea is that I take a chord progression from a standard that is quite challenging or peculiar or just not standard. And I look at some ways to solve it by transcribing that part of solos by famous jazz musicians. So for this first episode, we're looking at the standard How Deep Is The Ocean? And it's the part where it goes to E flat 7 for two bars, A flat 7 for two bars, to B7, two bars, and then one bar B flat 7, and then it's a 2 5 to C minor. Right, so it's a string of dominant chords, but it's not like rhythm changes where the chords move according to the circle of fifths. This is different. And many people have trouble coming up with something that is tasteful and interesting and not just playing mixed linear scales up and down. So the first solo I'm going to take a look at is Peter Bernstein. Then we're going to go to a piano player, Kenny Barron, and we're going to finish with lines played by Canadian jazz guitar player Ed Bickert. So first I'll play the line slowly with a click. Then I will play the line in context of a solo, and then I'll come back and give my thoughts. So here is the line by Peter Bernstein. One, two. If you're wondering about the layout of this video, it's the layout I'm using to stream on twitch.tv, which is a site full of uh, game streamers. But I'm, I think I'm the first jazz guitar player there and it's very enjoyable every day. I'm practicing jazz guitar live on stream, interacting with viewers, answering questions. So if you wanna be part of that, if you want to ask me questions about this lesson or any lesson or about jazz guitar, join me on Twitch. There's a link to my Twitch channel in the description and follow me there and you'll get notified the next time when I'm live. And I'm live every day. Also, if you want to have a tab of all the lines for this lesson, I have a Patreon site. You can download the tab there and also the tab for all my other videos. Okay, let's take a look at this line. So it starts with this. So it is a B minor arpeggio. 
B minor arpeggio over B flat 7. That means that there is a flat 13, right, the F sharp, and there's a flat 9, the B. Flat 13, flat 9, so it's altered. Resolution to E flat. And then it goes to some bluesy vocabulary. Right, it's a, it sounds bluesy over uh, E flat to a bluesy line over A flat 7. Notice that he's not using the blues skill to sound bluesy, but instead he's playing the arpeggio and the 9 and the 6, or the 9 and the 13. So for E flat, right, here's the 6 and the 9. Then he goes to A flat 7, and again he's just playing a simple line uh, with notes from the arpeggio and the 9 and the 6. 9, 6. And of course the interval jumps also make it sound bluesy and the slides. Then the next bar, B7, we place these notes, which is basically playing B sus, or F sharp minor 7. This arpeggio. Then it goes to B flat 7, and then the 2 5 to C minor, and I think the thing to pick up there is not so much the notes, but the rhythms. All syncopated notes, offbeat notes, and that's an interesting effect that not many jazz players use effectively, but Peter Bernstein is very effective with that. And it's very beneficial to practice that kind of thing, to play a jazz solo, uh, combining eighth notes with those syncopated notes. One, two, three. Let's go to the next line, which is by piano player Kenny Barron. It is mainly what he plays. I changed some little things to make it a bit more guitaristic, some octave displacements, some other embellishments. Let's listen. One, two, three, four, one. So it starts with this typical bebop line for E flat 7 or B flat minor with some enclosures. Right, he's enclosing the 7th first, then the 5th, and then the 3rd. Then we go to E flat 7, he's, he basically plays E flat minor. That's just an E flat minor arpeggio. Then we're, we're at B7, and he's thinking uh, F7 altered. That's a typical altered line. And then we're at the B flat 7. I would uh, see this as just a long 2-5. Uh, D half diminished, which is basically the same in B flat 7. D half diminished G7. And on G7 there is this big uh, B diminished arpeggio. Very gypsy jazz. All 
right, let's go to the third line, which is a line by Ed Bickert. One, two, three. <laughs> So this starts out with a bluesy line for E flat 7. He plays it in a different key, they play it in A minor, so it's in a different frets. But I like to play bluesy lines at the several places. And one of those places is with my first finger on the third of the chord on the high E string, right, E flat. Right, so he plays slides to A flat 7. So again, this is a bluesy line in triplets. Very interesting. And, and again, this is a place I like to play blues with my first finger located around the root of the chord. So A flat seven. So it's in that position. Even though my first finger is on the G, it's still around that position of the guitar. That's how I see it. So first E flat around the third. A flat. Then we're gonna go to B7. And he's thinking F sharp minor major seven. So that's a pattern, right? We see with uh, several of these solos, or actually all of them, when you have a dominant chord, you can think about a two chord that goes with it. So Kenny Barron is not thinking A flat seven, he's thinking E flat minor. And Peter Bernstein wasn't thinking B7, he was thinking F sharp minor. And Ed Bickert also is thinking F sharp minor, but he's thinking F sharp minor major seven. And then again, I would see this as a two five one to C minor. I think that's a nice two five one lick by itself. Some really nice stuff here, and the way I would suggest you practice it is by just learning this verbatim and playing it on a backing track. And uh, I have a backing track for How Deep Is The Ocean. It's the one you heard in this video. I will link it in the description. And just play it verbatim many times until you have it in your fingers, until you have the timing correctly, until you have the phrasing correctly, and then start soloing around it. So play your own solo towards one of those lines and then continue just the way I did it in the demonstrations. And then after that, after you've got it in your, in your ears and your fingers, you can take it apart and practice the ideas. Again, if you want to tap, uh, it's available on my Patreon. I hope to see many of you on my Twitch streams. Maybe you want to ask me a question about these lines, you can do that. You can do that and I'll be happy to answer. So hopefully I will see you there or I will see you in the next video. Bye.